Welcome to Noisegate. Today we are at the Melbourne Guitar Show and we're just going to go around and we're going to chat to some producers, we're going to chat to some makers and we're going to see what we can find. Caulfield Racecourse, let's go and check it out. We're here at Wolf Guitars. Hey man, how are you? Andy from Noisegate here. Uh, nice to meet you too. Can you tell us a little bit about Wolf Guitars? Uh, just a little top line of what you've got for us. Yeah, sure. So we're a company based in Fremantle, WA. And um, so we manufacture our guitars in Vietnam in our factory. And they come to us and they get fret leveling, pickups, tuners, because we're all qualified luthiers. We do all the, um, all the setup work to your exact specifications. If there's nothing you don't like, you know, we'll sort it out. No questions asked. You get the setup guarantee and every guitar is just set up to play 100%. Great. Well, I have to say, this, this Brian May kind of thing <laughs> caught my eye there. That's quite cool. So that's got all of the, all of the Brian May yeah, phase yeah, things yeah. too. On and off and then phase. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Hey, thanks for... Oh. I just might add... All these are neck through to tell his... Well. Look at that. Neck through. Beautiful. They're pretty... They're solid guitars. Lovely. Well, thanks for telling us about them. See you, see you around. No worries. Here we are at ESP. Now, straight off the line, these are the new Kirk Hammett ones that are announced yesterday. Is that right? Tell us about them. Yeah, that's right. Am I holding this or am I... You can hold it if you like. I'm going to hold it real quick. Right. How you going, team? Um, so this is the uh, new line of KHVs that have just come out from the LTD line. They were originally from the USA line that the team built for them and then come over to LTD. So if you want to come a little bit closer, we can see... This is the uh, the V2 shape. We've got it in three different finishes. We've got the black sparkle, the red sparkle, and the metallic gold. Uh, in regards to specs, Carina body, maple neck, ebony fingerboard. We got these cool like new wave inlays. Kirk is quite the surfer, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, and then we've got these EMG bone breaker signature pickups as well. So um, a lot of spec for the guitar. Very high end, very high quality. Great new features. Uh, colorways sort of reminiscent to some old school style stuff as well. So yes, Andy, very exciting times yeah, indeed. Very exciting. Now, I, I have to say that the, this red sparkle does catch my eye, but they all look really great. Uh, what else have we got from ESP LTD that is of interest? Uh, so this wall here, you can see, is everything high end. So we've got models from the USA line and from the Japan line. So. From the left, we've got this USA M1. We've got this nice, if you want to come a little bit closer, here, Mel, come up a bit. We've got this um, beautiful one of one exhibition model in the stream. So all this, all the hardware uh, is one of one, hand built in the Japan factory. It took about a year, so that was for the NAM release as well. Um, let's have a look at the back here. It's not often that you see quilted backs. <laughs> back of the headstock as well which is really exciting um, it's a piece that everyone has checked out uh, this weekend at the show so it's definitely something for you to come down and, and have a look at um, so the next one we've got another uh, ESP USA this is the uh, Nosferatu this is pyrographed yeah. so all done by a, a pi I don't know the word pi no what is, what is it pi pyography what pyro pyro <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I always forget that word but um yeah, so it's another sort of one of 15 pieces. They're at Belfield Music. Um, another USA line. We've got these ESP originals, these beautiful Mystiques, uh, and the Snapper here as well in the Fade. So all built in the Japan factory uh, custom shop. So a lot here to look at. It's very exciting. Now, 20 grand, have you got uh, a pay PayPal or something there that I can just transfer you that? Yeah, cool. All right, no worries. I'll do that later. Thanks. Hey man, how are you? Andy from Noisegate here. Uh, very good. Uh, tell us about what you've got here for us. Well, we've got the Fractal Audio line, all the Fractal gear that's available uh, in the near future. Um, and we've got some red sound speakers and some free the tone pedals. Now these red sound, these are FRFR cabs, is that right? Yeah. yeah. 
They're, they're new? I, I've not heard of these ones before. Are they new on the scene or are they...? We uh, needed some FR, FRFR speakers that you know match the axe effects quite well and these ones, we tried them out and they just sounded great. We tried a few out but um, yeah, we stuck on these ones for a bit. Yeah. I love the I love the physical size of them too. They're sort of not an enormous lug. So oh, yeah, it's great, and um, you know they slave into each other. So that one's powering, and that one as well, and it's just lovely. Yeah. So that's a super easy stereo rig for anyone running a fractal or any other model of right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Cheers. We've got we've got some of the Laney stuff here. We're gonna we're gonna see if we can have a chat to them. Hello, mate. How are you? Andy from Noisegate here. Uh, I wondered if you could tell us about some of the stuff that Laney is showing us at the festival today. Absolutely. So I'm Roger from AMS. Right. Uh, so we're here with, obviously, with Laney. We've got Sammy Vincent from Laney, from, from Laney as well. Um, so one of the things that we're showing, there's a new LA studio head. So basically, this is a low-watt, vintage-sounding, vintage-looking amp. Yep. It's based off the Supergroup series of the original LA30. Yep. Um, and the great thing with this is it's great for not just for doing gigs, but also for doing uh, home home recording. Right. Heath West caught the studio, so you can plug this head straight into your into your uh, computer, yep. into your DAW. Right. Uh, it can go into a passive cab or into a power cab. Right. Yep. And the fact that you've got uh, a break, a point one of a watt break, which means right. you can really crank up the you know the amp at yes, home yeah. without without annoying the neighbours, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but still get that kind of classic vintage. Laney Supergroup sound from it. Great, great, awesome. And uh, and you've got obviously the Lion Hearts and the Iron Hearts as well. Yeah, so we've got the full range here from Laney, pretty much. We've got uh, both Lion Hearts and Iron Hearts. We've also got the Laney Digbeth bass range as well. This is a new range, the the bass one. Yeah, so the, so the Digbeth came out uh, last year, um, and some of the guys which are playing the Digbeth live on stage at the moment on tour are guys like Nathan East. Mm -hmm. So we're here with uh, Adam. We're talking about the new Ibanez 2023 range. What have you got on at the at the show for us here? Yeah, so most of the new products we brought this year are all from the 2023 range, from the you know, additions of the headless range, an extension of the headless bass market with a new fretless version as well, and a new six string, uh, and then um, a great new addition the AZ with all the single coils. So. Yeah, we're showing off some of the 2023 product and looking forward to having it in stores in the next couple of weeks. Great. And are these the? Is this the? Um, uh, what's his name? The blues. The blues fella. His Josh flat five. Josh. Josh Smith. Josh Smith. Josh yeah. Great. Cool. And then that looks like a Satriani up there. Yeah, I've always got to have a Satch on display for for everyone to see. Of course. Of course. Uh, and the headless range. They are new for Ibanez, or they are something that have been around for a little while. About, uh, we're about 18 months into the into the new range. Um, just a couple of new colours added to the range as well. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to getting a lot of attention at the show. So Great. Yeah, well, it definitely seems to be the thing that a lot of players are getting into is the headless thing. And I'm sure that Ned Steinberger is ruining the fact that he was about 30 years early. <laughs> but, uh, but they look great. They look great. And you've got some George Bensons up here. Yep. And... Uh, display. We've got a couple of new... Uh, got a couple of the AZESs on display that have been hot rodded with some Seymour Duncan, which is cool for everyone can try, and uh, just some of the new new acoustics to the range as well. Great, thank you very much. So here here we are at the Gibson stand. Of course, you can't have a guitar show without Gibson and Fender, right? So a couple of the new Epiphones, a couple of the new Gibsons that are on display here. We all know and love the shapes. We know what they're looking for. Now we're here with Vega, Vega Trim, is that right? Yes, Vega Trim. Tell us about it. Okay, so Vega Trim, um, I'm from Shred Guitar Works, my name's Michael, and I'm the importer for Australia on Vega Trim. Um, Vega Trim is a small company that um, designed and made in Spain. It's a stainless steel replacement tremolo for all existing strats, two point and six point systems. 
that um, is unique in the way that um, it, it's a knife edge. Its tuning stability is fantastic. Sounds good, feels good. You've got to experience Vega Trem. Now, I understand that they make a trem for a Tele, is that right? They do. They make the new VT2, the Tully trem. I haven't got one here to show you. new, amazing, revolutionary uh, VT2 uh, Tully trim. So it goes onto any existing Tully with minimal mods. There's only two screws that go in over here underneath the plate and it hinges off this fulcrum over here and does that. Very cleverly, the springs are on the back. Um, the strings go through over here. So it's a beautiful design, all stainless steel with this magnificent Vega trim arm, embossed arm. Got to experience. So we're getting closer to the one guitar to rule them all. We can put three pickups in a telly and now put a, a, uh, a trim arm on it. And we've got, we've got everything we need, right? Uh, Tim, Andy with Noisegate, how are you? Can you tell us a little bit about George Evans Amps? Well, George Evans is um, partnership Phil George and Tim Evans. Yep. Um, I come from a background of um, Lab Systems, yep. which was a big 80s and 90s bass amps. But we just decided through our passion and love for amps to build good amps and that's what we do we build top of the line high quality amps we only build 12 a year that's it tell us about what you're showing here what what is what's the range kind of entail that's a 50 water um, as a combo we do that in a head version as well um, this one's a 30 but they are um, that comes in a head or a combo and this is a little seven. This is our new little baby. And this is an absolute beast. It does a rock, it does the strat stuff, it does everything. So that's, that's a kind of a seven watt, I'm assuming? Seven watts, yeah. Great. And, uh, and is it multi channel or is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you got. So, yeah, you've got two channels. Great, sounds beautiful. Now we know Gibson and Fender and all of the classic shapes, but there are things that catch your eye and this is definitely one of them. Danny, Andy from Noisegate, how are you? Good, thank you. Tell us about what we've got right here. Well, you've got uh, a, a guitar that's made out of aircraft aluminium. They're virtually unbreakable. and there's a Even by aircraft handlers? Oh yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, it gives you a, a very nice bright tone and the sustain another guitar can match it so is it a is it a sort of a one piece uh design yes, a totally one piece uh, as you can see the fretboard is made out of aluminium too but it, it's screwed on here and the coating that i've got on it is nice and slippery so when you play one you find out how easy it is to play and most people, by the time they get used to it, when they first start, they always overbend. And you've got a, uh, a locking trim system on here, is that right? Yeah, that's right. And that's a, a trim system that's actually made in Queensland. Andy from Noisegate here. Tell us about frost amplifiers. What have you got on, on show for us today? Well, we've got two models here. Um, our amplifiers are characterised by something a little bit different. We're not the normal run-of-the-mill amps. Um, our bigger one's the 15-watt um, clap A, which is Class A push-pull. So most, most push-pull amps aren't Class A, they're Class AB. We've got a device in there which holds it in Class A. So you can hear the difference when you change from Class A to Class AB. Yeah. And these are uh, EL84s? Yeah. yeah, they are. Well, they're actually the Russian equivalents, which are a bit higher spec. Yeah. Great. And, um, and are you, you're obviously Australian, but are you Melbourne based? No, I'm based in Hobart actually. Yeah, so we came over on the boat and filled the car with amplifiers and yeah, so uh, yeah, no, it's been good fun though. G'day, Andy here. Uh, tell us about Grubisa Guitars. Grubisa Guitars started around about 1990 and this is the Merlin and this was developed... Um, in the early 90s and I had the pleasure of having Dave Leslie from the Baby Animals endorse my guitars and has been playing them since 1994 yeah. and to this day has 
three of these guitars plus two other style of guitars that I have made for him. So, and so the, the obvious, you know, Les Paul uh, similarities jump out, but tell us about a slightly different um, electronics configuration there as well. What, what, what have you got on the guitar? Well, generally I didn't want to make a, another Les Paul yep. style copy. Yep. Yep. So in order to make it slightly different, because the guitar players are very conservative, yes. I decided to put strings through the body. I've made the bridge myself. Yep. Um, and the body shape lends itself to a lot of other guitar designs. We're here with Mark from Holdfast Custom Paint. Tell us about what we're looking at here. These are um, airbrushed guitars, so basically customers come to me with a guitar and they tell me what design, what picture they want on it and not, I airbrush it for them yeah so any sort of design every guitar is completely individual and do do players go out and play this because a lot of these they look so good that I wouldn't want to take it to a gig it'd get stuffed up I reckon yeah a lot of guys do the one on that picture that's George Shepherd's from Shepherd right. um, yeah a lot of artists they get their album covers put on yeah. and they play them yeah and you, is your history as an artist or as a muso or somewhere in the middle of them? Have you just sort of taken to painting guitars as a new medium? Yeah, I wanted a guitar painted. I couldn't find anyone to do it, so I sort of taught myself and got a business out of it. Common story, isn't it? I can't find someone to do what I want, so I'll do it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for chatting to us. No Cheers. Jason, can we have a chat to you? Andy from Noisegate, how are you? Tell us about what you've got on show at the guitar show for us today. Uh, well, we're representing uh, Head First Amplifications. This is an Australian, an Australian company, right? Australian company, Australian made. Uh, I'm the owner and the founder of the business, and we make these here. I'm actually two suburbs away. Is that right? Great. Yeah, this is our flagship amp. It's a 100 watt all tube head, and they're available in Australia and the US. So I've got, the, got these being made in the US as well. The US so, so this looks like a, a multi-channel kind of do-it-all beast, is that right? It's a, a three-channel amp uh, with MIDI switching. So you can basically store presets across the three channels of different voicing options and so on, which are available with those kind of touch-button touch switches. And then you can store them into presets to then be recalled. The amp's kind of, um, kind of like, you know, Marshall DNA, you know, it's kind of like basically modded Marshall yep. kind of tones yep. is, where, is what I'm going for, which is, um, you know, basically the sound that, you know, is in my head, right, that I want to reproduce is that kind of, you know, kind of modded Marshall high again kind of stuff, yeah. But it's got, it'll do, you know, it's got a clean channel, so it'll do like a plexi style cleans as well, all the way through to kind of, you know, Jose modded Marshall yeah. high again stuff, so... Awesome. Thanks for chatting to us. Cheers. We're here with Charles from Charles Celia Guitars. Hey guys. So tell us about what is on the show here at the Guitar Show for us. We've got the Tone Sanctuary stand here. So we have uh, the beautiful uh, Swedish Strandberg guitars here, made by Ola Strandberg. And then we have all of my guitars, which is uh, all of the Cilia guitars that I built in Sydney. Yep. And um, yeah, and my newest Chevetta acoustic. So tell us about this acoustic. Yep, so it's, uh, it's essentially an acoustic that if you don't like acoustics, you will like. So it just addresses all the issues, especially if you come from an electric guitar perspective, yep. like... Um, like it addresses all the playability and tuning issues that guys that come from an electric guitar field would have a problem with on playing acoustic. Yeah, right. Right. So, so some of the uh, is that a, a smaller neck or a kind of a closer string spacing or what? More ergonomic neck. It's a different radius. It's a pickup system that actually sounds and feels like the acoustic itself. Right. And um, there's there's full body contouring as well, like almost like strat contouring right. and, and belly contouring as well. And uh, you've got two kind of royalty in terms of Australian guitar players up here. Erwin Thomas and Michael Dolce both play your guitars, that's right? They sure do, yes. Yeah, great. Uh, and while we're here, tell us about some of these beautiful looking uh, tops that are on some of these guitars over here. Yeah, so we got like, uh, we got a new range of rustic finishes, which are our renegade guitars. So we've got a rustic turquoise over there and a lot of other custom shops. We've got... Um, We've got like a thylacine with a water drop inlay here today. We've got some of our hollow body Bellaroras. We've got halos. Yeah, we've got a bit of a bit of a mixture of all of our guitars here this year. 
And where can people go to to learn more about Charles Cilia? You can contact us directly at ciliaguitars.com or through our Facebook page, Cilia Guitars. Great. Thanks for chatting to us. Thanks, Cheers. Tell us about Kink Guitar Pedals. Um, well, look, we're local. We're in Melbourne. We started in 2017. This is our second guitar show. It would have been probably our fourth if COVID didn't exist. We do a wide range of stuff from vintage fuzz circuits, modern day distortions, a couple of modulation circuits, all made in the southeastern suburbs of Melbourne. And one that I think people may know, especially if they're fans of the Chats, is this uh, collaboration that you did with the Chats, which I think has some of the best uh, design on it that I've seen in a pedal in a long time. Tell us about that one. Yeah, so I was, I was working at my daytime job and um, I got approached by the managers of the Chats to do a collaboration. So I asked them what they were after. They use a big muff into a boost for, for solos and that's what I put together for them. So it's been fantastic. A short time after that, I was um, hit up by the same people again to do something for Ross Knight from the Cosmic Psychos. So hence the dose is about. And a further collaboration is the guys from Earthbong in Germany, a doom band. So I'm doing a collaboration with those guys as well that hasn't quite come out yet, but it won't be too far away. So we can uh, we keep an eye out for that one. Where can we learn more about Kink Guitar Pedals? Well, just jump onto kinkguitarpedals.com. Easy. And uh, look, give us a follow. Give us some love. Cheers. Thanks for chatting to us. Uh, all right, here we are chatting with Marcel at Louder Guitars. Uh, tell us about Louder Guitars and uh, what, what can we expect to see at the guitar show? That's a very, very good question. I've literally just arrived at Louder Guitars. Um, I've known these guys for quite a few years now. Um, they're based in Adelaide and um, incredible build quality, um, as you can see. Um, I'm looking forward to having a go on the, um, the F-hole guy. We're featuring the IK Multimedia products that started off years ago as the IOS products and then developed into the um, um, effects pedals and all that sort of stuff. Really what happened was the Amplitube was developed and from that everybody said we want to take that out live. So, so the, the Tonex is the new product from... It's the talk of the town from IK Multimedia. Um, it's under the Amplitube banner like all the X-Gear pedals are and... Um, the Tonex uh, pedal itself is kind of the second part in the chain. If you've got a number of different amp rigs that you want to get into, there's the box which is called the Capture, which captures and reamps and also allows you to model all your favourite rigs. And then once you've actually got those together, you can load it into the um, Tonex software, use it as a plug-in in your door or whatever, and then, okay, we want to take it to a gig. So the Tonex pedal was uh, brought out. And you can load your models into the Tonex pedal and take any amp that you want. And um, for the most part, that's the closest most guitarists are ever going to get to a Dumble. Yes, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Misspelled and all. <laughs> uh, now, so the Tonex is being called sort of the Kemper Killer. Uh, it, it's sort of doing this this uh, profiling thing like Kemper, is that right? Sim a similar kind of situation, yeah. It uses an AI modelling process to actually um, capture the nuances of the amp rig itself. And um, when you have a look at the software models that are available, if you don't want to capture your own, there's already over 6,000 models available. So, ah. oh, so it's just like my own personal collection of 6,000 amps, right? <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for chatting to us. Can you tell us about what we are looking at here? Yeah, sure. These are the Lava Mitri guitars. So they are made of carbon fiber. And the special point is that the construction technique is a unibody construction. So there's no glue, no joint. So it's resistance to humidity and temperature changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so strong that it doesn't even need a truss rod. Right. right, so it will stay in place forever. Wow. Yeah, and it's also a smart guitar. Right, so. Uh, you have built-in tuners, and it's a touchscreen, right? All right, and there's a built-in recorder where you can just one touch do the recording. All right, and you pick up the clean signal of the guitar. It doesn't pick up the surrounding noise. So when you press save, it, your recording will appear on the phone that paired with the guitar directly. Okay, so what you can Bluetooth the phone or something to this? Yeah, it will go over Wi-Fi. Yeah, so upload to the cloud, cloud to the phone. Yeah. Yeah, and that's built-in effects too. The effect works both ways, so you can do it acoustically. So I'm not plugging into anything. Yeah, 
Very cool. And there are tons of effects that you can choose from. All right, and of course, if you are plugged into the system, all the things will come from the speaker. Another classic Australian guitar here, Cole Clark. You probably know Cole Clark, but we're going to have a quick look at them anyway. Andy here with Noisegate. How are you? Fennec Guitars, tell us about them and what you've got on show at the guitar show for us today. Awesome. Yeah, well, welcome. So, made in Queensland. Um, so, we're pretty excited to be down here. Yes. Um, we've got a full range on display today. So, from my standard series, select series, and the ones I personally build, the master built series. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's been a great, great couple of days. Yes, yeah. yeah. Cool. And so, what, what uh, is... Look, I have to ask you, what's your favourite uh, and what is your specialty in terms of your master built? Oh, look, with our guitars, they're all, obviously all very hand built, yeah. one at a time. We're sort of producing only a few hundred instruments a year. Yeah. Beautiful 4A maple. Look at the figuring in that neck. That is beautiful, really is. So, Andy here with Noisegate. Tell us about Andrew White Acoustic Guitars. Hi, Andy, my name's Erica. Uh, Andrew White is an American luthier. Um, we have imported these uh, guitars from the factory where they're produced. They're only available in America and the UK. So we wanted to bring something different to Australia that looks beautiful, sounds beautiful. It's great for buskers, great for professional musicians and even beginners. It has all the componentry in it that, that you would need. So you can literally plug in and play. They are all hand fret levelled um, at our shop in Fremantle, Western Australia, Frio Guitars by my team of luthiers and um, they come in at a very nice entry price point. They all come with hard cases, yep. certificate of authenticity, serial number. Uh, we're here with Toscano Guitars. Uh, tell us about Toscano Guitars. Yeah, so it's run by me, Steve Toscano. I uh, hand make these guitars out of my Sydney workshop. Yeah. And they are um, obviously hand built by you? Hand built by these hands, yeah. Good. And there's some beautiful looking uh, backs on these two here. Tell us about them. This one here is uh, this one here is Power Ferro, uh, back and sides with a spruce top, and an ebony board. Beautiful timber Power Ferro. Love love working with it. Yeah, and this one's uh, African ebony. Beautiful, beautiful looking woods. Tell us about uh, Junji Jia, is that right? Uh, Junji Xia. Junji Xia. Yeah. Tell us about these. Um, I've got a new maker and um, just the guitars I make. So you, you make these yourself? Oh yes, yes. Uh, right here in Melbourne. In Melbourne, okay. And uh, this is a really interesting looking end to the, the, the neck on this guitar. Tell us about this. Uh, well, it's from a tree uh, burned alive, so it's burned to death. Right. And, um, I got what's left, wow. and I thought um, it's gonna be cool if I match it with uh, spruce yep. uh, with wormholes on it, right. so they actually little sun holes. Yep. Yeah, um, so it's kind of cool. So it it obviously looks really like the tree itself. You know, it's it's exactly the piece of wood that you got. I like that. It got some features. Uh, I mean, I don't like to. Um, twisted since too much yeah. I mean it is what it is yes. and uh, trying to just bring out the beauty of the wood itself yes. yeah. yeah well it looks wonderful thanks for chatting to us as you can see a very popular show this year lots of really interesting things that we checked out we'll put some links below the video for some of the makers that we chatted to today but go and follow them go and uh, find out more about them and as always we'll see you next time on Noisegate